Dead Cells was fully released this month to rave reviews, but it's not just the stellar gameplay and beautiful minimalist style of this roguelike Castlevania inspired action platformer that's got people talking. It's all of the amazing and ridiculous easter eggs that players are now discovering that's making some noteworthy buzz. So today we're going to break down some of the best references and hidden gems that you can find in the game with our list of the top 10 easter eggs you missed in Dead Cells. Starting us off in at number 10, Portal. Throughout the game, you'll notice that there are small blocky runes that appear on the procedurally generated walls of the game's levels. Now, sometimes they're on floors. And if you activate one, a blue portal will open up, leading to a challenge rift, where you can score yourself some treasure and power if you manage to make it through all the traps and obstacles and not get dead. And what's that a reference to? Well, none other than Portal, Valve's hit puzzle platformer game that gives the player an object called the Aperture Science Handheld Portal Device that allows them to create interspatial portals between two flat planes. The one that you enter is blue rimmed, and the one that you exit is orange rimmed, just like in Portal. Up next, number nine, this is Sparta. One of the many weapons that you can obtain in Dead Cells is the Spartan Sandals. While they're not the best item that you can score in the game, when using them, you'll notice an Easter egg referencing the movie 300, the 2006 Zack Snyder directed war film based on Frank Miller's 1998 comic. In the film, there's a pretty famous scene where Leonidas, played by Gerard Butler, decides to get diplomatic with the Persian ambassador and kicks him in the chest, causing him to fall to his death in a seemingly bottomless pit below. And in Dead Cells, when you use the sandals, you front kick your foes which knocks them backwards. Now do it when they're standing next to a ledge and they'll take even more damage from the fall. Up next at 8, Near Automata. Dead Cells has a few Near Automata easter eggs in it. One is a portrait that you can find in High Peak Castle of 2B and 9S, with pod 042 ever so slightly in the background. The second is a reference to the Lunar Tears Moonflower Keys in the Emile's Memories side quest, which in itself is also a reference to the Moonflower in the 2010 Near game. There's floating white flower pickups that you can find in Dead Cells that are keys that aren't marked on the map. Many players just found them by sheer luck initially. Three of them are required to unlock a secret path. Apparently, the love of Near Automata is quite prominent at the Motion Twin Studio. According to the developers, I quote, Our graphic artists and some others in the team are huge fans of Near Automata, so they had fun being able to disseminate references to it all throughout the game. Up next, number seven, The Scream. Apparently, Motion Twin has got a thing for artwork too. In High Peak Castle, a location that contains many an Easter egg if it wasn't already obvious, there's a very familiar famous piece of artwork hanging on its walls. It's The Scream by Norwegian expressionist painter Edvard Munch. And while it's a bit lacking in adapting the piece's sophisticated brush strokes, you can't deny the rendition manages to capture the look of horror on its subject's face. The Scream was painted in 1893 and has since become one of the most recognizable pieces of art history, even becoming the target of high profile art thefts twice, once in 1994 and the second in 2004 alongside the Madonna. And at number 6, Hollow Knight. Fans of the Metroidvania genre are likely familiar with Hollow Knight. It's a game in which you play a knight on a quest to uncover secrets of the long abandoned insect kingdom, Hollow Nest, which all takes place in a surreal atmosphere. Now, there's a room in Dead Cells that features some ancient looking laboratory equipment, and a wall covered head to toe in what appears to be bugs on display in glass frames. Smack dab in the center of all the framed deceased creatures is the head of the nameless insect knight protagonist that you play in Hollow Knight. Up next in our number 5 spot, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is yet another game that has a slew of references made to it in Dead Cells. Now, according to devs in an interview with IGN, much of the game is inspired by Dark Souls, saying, I quote, Dark Souls is our second main influence for the difficulty, mainly, but also the rolling system, the ambience, learning the patterns of the enemy, getting better each time you die. Now, there's a portrait in none other than the High Peak Castle that references the bonfire, and another one that features Solera of Astoria, and then another bonfire reference in one of the lore rooms, in which you can find a dead warrior lying next to the bonfire. Fire. And no, the bonfire doesn't replenish your health. But at least it looks super cool. And at number four, Firewatch. For those of you who love beautiful indie games or first person exploration titles, there's a pretty good chance that you've played Firewatch. And if you haven't, you should probably do that after this video. Campo Santos' debut game, released back in 2016, follows the story of a man named Henry in 1989, who has just taken a job as a fire lookout in the Shoshone National Forest, following the Yellowstone fires of 1988. Communicating only with a woman named Delia via walkie-talkie, he begins to unravel a mystery about previous inhabitants of the park, and the player learns about Henry's own backstory and why he's chosen this new secluded life. It won a ton of awards in 2016 and 2017 as well. Turns out Dead Cell devs, Motion Twin, are also big fans of the game. Inside of High Peak 
castle in Dead Cells, there's a large landscape portrait of the promotional art from Firewatch. And it's pretty spot on. Pixelated, but pretty spot on. And at number three, The Legend of Zelda. There's two major Easter eggs referencing The Legend of Zelda in Dead Cells. One is the boomerang weapon, which is pretty similar to the boomerang that appears in Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Aesthetically, it's a bit off, having two gems in its center rather than just the one in A Link to the Past. But the color and design are pretty spot on. It's also worth noting that it's a fantastic weapon to use in the game too, with it causing critical damage to your foes whenever it returns back to you. Now, the second reference is yet again another painting in High Peak Castle. This time, it's a portrait that depicts the dueling peaks from Breath of the Wild. And at number two, Castlevania references. In a game inspired by Castlevania, you bet your ass there's a bunch of Castlevania Easter eggs. So, for starters, there's a portrait of none other than High Peak Castle that features the likes of Alucard from Symphony of the Night, with his goldish yellow and black collar, his white long blonde hair, and his perfectly long and straight nose. Speaking of Alucard, you can also score his shield. Dead Cells has an item in it called the Rampart Shield, which is one of the first shields that you'll come across in the game. While aesthetically it's not an exact match, it does have a likeness that's undeniable. Another shield borrowed from Castlevania looks a lot more like its inspiration, the Cudgel Shield, which is almost identical to the Knight Shield from both Harmony of Despair and Symphony of the Night. And last but not least, there's a collection of items that resemble those in Castlevania. The food. Pretty darn similar to the grub that you can obtain in Symphony of the Night. But thanks to better graphics these days, they look all the more delicious. And finally, in our number one spot, a famous corpse. There's a dead body hiding out in a crevice in a lore room in Dead Cells. Now at the top of the hole when you first enter, you'll find a sarcophagus that looks like someone has already pilfered through it, with it being ever so slightly open. Next to it is a scrappy looking rope that's fairly short in length. Jump down to the bottom and you'll find a body lying there. Now take a closer look at its hair and its outfit. And well, 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 if it ain't one of video gaming's most famous rogues and treasure hunters, Nathan Drake. The Uncharted franchise's death defying protagonist is known for getting himself out of some of the most difficult situations, which would normally kill the average Joe. And that makes this Easter egg all the more hilarious. All right, there we have it, friends. Which of these Easter eggs have you found so far? Which ones are you going to go on the hunt for? And for those of you who've played through the game, what are your thoughts on it? Share all of your feels in that comment section below. If you dug this video, spread the love and hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe to Top 10 Gaming for more Easter egg videos, and lists, and news, and updates. We even have a nifty little playlist floating on your screen right now, just waiting for you to click it. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all in the next video.